this episode of the Business Communicators. People have to disconnect, right? We have to disconnect. We have to encourage things outside of these electronic platforms because, especially in this country, um, one of the areas where we're struggling is the area of critical thinking. Not just young people don't have it, grown ups don't have it. We see it daily. You're listening to the Business Communicators. Welcome to season five of the Business Communicators. I'm Austin Satin, joined alongside Kim Davis and Thomas Bain on the number one rated podcast for communications professionals. That's verified fact. Kim, Thomas, we're missing Hattie. She's busy yes. with work. She can't step out during the lunch break, which is unfortunate. But uh, she's slaying the communications world. So exactly. Exactly. It's going to be with both of you this week. Cool. Uh, I, I, I think it's great that we're all professionals on the backside of it because I remember sitting at like an IABC meeting and I don't remember what crisis it was a long time ago and you hear everybody's phone like kind of chirp and it's like, oh, some emergency is about to be going down and, and you, you start to hear the news about 30 minutes later because all, all of us have crisis comms somewhere in our portfolio. Yes. Yeah. Crisis. I don't know. We, we haven't done an episode on specific crisis comms in, in, in quite some time. Maybe we should... Uh, do that soon but if, if if we're talking about crisis communications i think there's a company that's been in the spotlight <laughs> <laughs> this week and that'd be TikTok. uh so we're, we're recording on friday so you're probably listening to this on monday sometime uh but last thursday uh the ceo of TikTok, shu chu uh spoke in front of congress for gosh four four and a half hours testified you know there were a few breaks calls for recess uh but i've never seen such bipartisan support ever on yeah. a specific topic in in in, in banning TikTok. Um, it was actually one of my predictions for you know the year 2023 for communications that TikTok would ultimately be banned. And I remember that. What, yeah after watching yeah. after watching the the hearing yesterday, I'm not sure that you know Mr. Chu did a good job of selling his case and actually conveying confidence that TikTok was a platform for good and that should be allowed in the US. Now was there some political grandstanding involved? Absolutely. You know that happens all the time, but I don't know that his his hearing conveyed confidence and I'm just curious uh what both of you think and, and Kim, I'll go ahead and start with you. So I I tend to be kind of where you are. I, I don't it, it was refreshing to see, you know, political grandstanding aside some bipartisan like them actually doing some work, you know what I mean? I think for that, it's just, oh, wow, they, they do work in that place. Um, but I don't think he, I don't think he did a great job. You know, this, and I think it's almost as though he was surprised at at, at the, the unified position that was being, that he was facing, and he didn't seem terribly prepared for it. Um, so no, I, I don't think he instilled a lot of confidence in, you know, we've heard the things about TikTok. We know that um, politicians have a thing, a thought about the social media space in general, right? So knowing that, I felt like we talk about crisis. His crisis team should have prepared him a little better. But no, I don't I don't think he did a great job. And I, I'm kind of leaning toward your earlier prediction, Thomas, meaning Austin, that this TikTok may not make it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think that... Yes, it was good to see see a unified front. Here's what we're going to come from. I think that they were he was prepared for all about project the ownership Texas. and Project Texas and China not having right. access. And when China throws a curveball, the hour of the start of the hearing saying we're not selling TikTok, period. Right. But right. then I think I think it it when he, when it went to other aspects of TikTok about the, um, is it good for people's psyche? Is it good for um, the addictiveness uh, on it? And, and it kind of took a left-hand turn. And I think that's really when he started getting hung, hung up more so than anything. And, and you know, it's a congressional hearing. So who knows what the next question is going to come to you because so, some, some uh, aide could hand you an article or could have just put a little sticky note saying, throw this in there. And it's like something that you covered two hours ago. Um, I, I, I didn't get to watch it. Um, but I, but reading all the commentaries and, and the transcripts of it and, and learning about the CEO, I think it's very interesting that they're trying to put in place, you know, no kids, no anything like that. 
and yet he doesn't let his own children on TikTok. Well, he he did explain that. I do want to clarify that because he said that his children are under the age of fourteen, uh, and yeah. where they live in Singapore, they're not by law allowed to have access to the platform, and so. He made it very clear that if they lived in the United States or a company or a country that allowed younger users, he would feel comfortable with them using the app. Now, that's a little bit easier said than done when, you know, they don't, they currently aren't allowed to have the app. It's easier to say, oh, yeah, I would totally grant them access. Uh, and plus, you know, he's the CEO of a company. He would definitely say that. But one, <laughs> one tweet that I did think was interesting, and this is actually from uh, the first guest that we ever had on the show for episode one, season one. And that's Sarah Fisher. She's the uh, media reporter for Axios. Uh, mm -hmm. She tweeted out during the hearing that it's clear that TikTok US CEO Sho Chu is trying to tread very carefully with his answers on Capitol Hill. He dodges yes, no questions, says he will get back to the committee, et cetera. He's doing a good job of not perjuring himself, but it's not making for convincing testimony mm. uh that was sent out probably about an hour and a half two hours into the hearing and i thought she hit the nail on the head uh you know there's there's an old saying in media relations and crisis communications that don't answer the question you were asked answer the question you would have liked to have been asked and i think he definitely hit that on the head um interestingly enough after the um the hearing TikTok communications they sent out a tweet saying our ceo came prepared to answer questions from congress but unfortunately the day was dominated by political grandstanding that failed to acknowledge real solutions already underway through project taxes or address industry-wide issues of youth safety also not mentioned today by members of the house commerce committee the livelihoods of the five billion businesses on TikTok, or the first amendment implications of banning a platform loved by 150 million Americans. So that was the uh, the response from TikTok Communications, or official statement on the hearing. Uh, I probably shouldn't have gotten myself involved in this, but I did. Uh, I, of course, <laughs> retweeted with a comment. And I did say that Chu also employed the strategy of not answering the questions he was asked, but answering the questions he would like to have been asked. I'm not sure he did anything to exude confidence in the platform's future to address concerns by the U.S. and other governments. I followed that up with this fun fact, that in 2008, MySpace peaked with 115 million unique users. Businesses and people have survived without the social network. And I concluded with this. If a business is reliant on just one app to succeed, they probably should rethink their business model. You've got to have a diverse digital presence to succeed. You can't just be reliant on one app. You know, I think that's, I could not agree more, right? Um, and in, in the space where I do a big part of my business on the media side, uh, there are some people uh, and I don't always like to call everybody a journalist because you work in the same space because that comes to me with some certain accountability and we don't all have that, but that have been able to create a space for themselves because of one platform. And, yep. and mostly I see it on, on, a, on Twitter, but outside of that, what are you doing, right? Because what if one day the one platform that you're totally engaged with or married to goes away so is, it, is your business gone? Is your presence gone? I, I you know, I guess it's good. You know, you live there and you think it's the end all be all, but it's not a smart strategy. It's not a strategy. Yeah, exactly. If you're in the business comm space, then yeah, you don't want to have one channel. You want to be where your, your people are. As a marketer where I'm buying ads, um, I know the demographics of TikTok. I know the demographics or the personas of Twitter. I know the personas of, of Facebook. Um, and the walled gardens that kind of come from each one of those. And so the privacy issues of sharing information with China, I, I have to play in those spaces because I'm targeting ads. I'm buying ads on people who are reading X magazine. I'm targeting gender X, Y, Z. I'm targeting this. I'm targeting business owners who sell this widget. Um, and, and so I have to play across all of them, but I'm not necessarily, and, and then I back it up with some of the, some of the organic, um, but but to, to your point, I, I kind of have to live in all spaces, but I think you should definitely narrow down if you understand who your customer is. And unfortunately, TikTok is younger, um, younger audience. And so you're buying a lot more of those in, impulse buys from there. Uh, lots of companies have gotten their start, T-shirt companies, uh, shoe companies all the way around. Um, I, I'm just happy that it's bringing light to the privacy side of it. And, and 
I, I get Project Texas. Oh, we're going to put this, put the information on the servers, and it's going to be audited by everything else like that. In today's they, world, nothing is private. Let's just well, and they, and they start had no there. timeline. He was very clear that they didn't have a timeline yeah. that he could provide. And so, if, and if if that's what TikTok really wants to talk about, like, great, you okay. have the greatest idea, but when? where? What's what's the timeline? When is it going to happen? But, yeah. are, you, are you just blowing smoke up our ass? But, but even if you have it on a server, you have information who's going from that server to that phone or to that computer or to that tablet. You have it coming from the company, from the ad buyer, from the media, and things like that. Unless the server is going to be like something out of. Um, James Bond, where the whole server's under underwater, and the only way to get access to it is if you swim underwater and grab the little card and plug it in there. It's never going to be secure. Whether China has direct access to it because of the way the laws are written and things like that, or whether it's because somebody hacked in and put pipeline into it, you, you, there, there's challenges. Yeah, Facebook's battling the same thing with the walled gardens. Twitter's facing it with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, Google's I mean, facing it. Let yeah, me ask a question. Sure. Do you do you think that with this that's happening right now with TikTok and and you know looks like it could be doom and gloom for them in the US. Who knows what'll happen? Does that open some is that helpful for Instagram to hundred percent? Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean there's been there's been uh reports coming out that um you know in terms of like search, TikTok has actually surpassed Google uh mm -hmm. for search. Uh it's taking away uh ad spend from Twitter, Meta and Google. Um, you know, I think there are some lobbying numbers that are out there that, you know, big tech in general is, you know, kind of pushing this narrative. Um, I think the whole the conversation is interesting. What I found interesting about, you know, the bipartisan support yesterday is it seemed that Republicans tended to focus more on the security angle from China. Mm -hmm. uh, that was their big concern, the ties to the CCP. And it seemed that the Democrats were more focused on uh, the other side of it, you know, the dangers of social media in general, you know, the the mental health aspect, the the mm -hmm. drugs, the the suicide, the the privacy concerns for children. Um, so it was interesting to me to see the, the different angles that uh, the different representatives had. Um, I do find it uh, really disturbing, though, that you know, it was so. I, I I had TikTok, right? I have a TikTok account, and I noticed in the the week leading up to it, a lot of the creators were posting the very same message. You know, this, it, it was clearly talking points that, you know, that the brand team from TikTok had sent out to its top creators trying to spread the narrative, like, hey, call your congressperson, let them know that X, Y, and Z, and about Project Texas. Like, it was clear that these influencers who have never, ever discussed anything like this were just reading straight mm -hmm. talking points. And the message was all the same. I get why they're doing that, right? Because they're trying to build up this, you know, this Gen Z is reliant on, on, on TikTok. And if you take it away, you might lose votes. Um, I do find it interesting to see how this whole story has changed from 2020 when Trump had tried to ban TikTok. Uh, and, and now it's gotten bipartisan support, which it didn't have a few years ago, which I, I find interesting. Um, this isn't unprecedented, though. I mean, we saw the U.S. government ban Huawei devices in the U.S. Uh, because, you know, the Chinese government, it was proven, uh, had, had, you know, tapped into the networks and we're using the spying. We saw a Forbes article that came out in October that the Chinese government was spying or using, I'm sorry, ByteDance was using TikTok to spy on journalists to figure out where leaks came from. I mean, it it it, it might not impact, you know, the 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 day-to-day -day user like, you know, me or you, Kim, or you, Thomas. You know, the Chinese government probably doesn't give a, you know, a you know what about us and what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. But I thought Dan Crenshaw brought up a good point yesterday. It's about the long game. And, yeah. you know, that that's what China's about. And if you go back and look at, you know, kind of what the Chinese government has done from a, a security and a espionage uh, threat over the last several decades, that's what they do. They play the long game. It's, it's a long-term infiltration. Um, now, I do think that there are other questions, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that Mr. Chu brought up, you know, that they are collecting data, but every social media company is is collecting data and i i do think to a, an extent that is a larger concern um you know we've had shiv malik on the podcast who has talked about data privacy you know go back and listen to those episodes they're the great content um i had a conversation with a friend yesterday and he said what's to stop china from buying the data straight out from like facebook or google and i said i think you're oversimplifying how easy it is to 
do that, you know, for a foreign intelligence government to do an agency to do that. I mean, that's like saying what's stopping Russia and China from going to Skunk Works or Raytheon and getting the latest stealth technology from, you know, the defense manufacturers. It's it's easier said than done. Um, so for me, I, I don't want to listen to the arguments about, you know, the, the dangers that TikTok provides to kids, because I think that information is no different than on any other platform. For me, the where I draw the X factor is the access to China. And uh, yesterday after the hearing, I didn't feel confident with, you know, the CEO's presentation. I actually deleted my account on TikTok. And I'll tell you what, wow. it's been different, um, you know, to scroll on my phone. You know, if I'm bored, I'm used to just opening up the app and spending some time on there weird it's a habit and it's uh you know 24 hours without it so we'll see if that continues but i don't know those are my thoughts so i have a tiktok account i don't really use it i'm more of an instagram user and i you know the reason that i used tiktok i think initially because it was there um, it was easier to to edit and post right <laughs> there it was when, when i first got the account and i know it's a huge audience and i thought you know what especially this year, since it's like, is it even going to make it? Will it be around? So I haven't focused on it. I thought, you know, let me keep my focus on, you know, I have, I do have an account, but you know, Instagram and, you know, Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and podcasting and LinkedIn. And so I, I haven't really been big into, Insta into TikTok. And so this year I was going, what is the year I thought, okay, I'm going to really dive into TikTok. But the way it started, the way the year started, I thought, let me wait and see. It may not be necessary. So yeah. Um, but I like that you're at least diversifying, you know, your your platforms, because that's, again, what we mentioned at the top of the show. If you want to be successful, right. you got to be where the people are. Uh, you know, you it's can't interesting. just be relying on one. I will tell you, I had a conversation with someone uh, probably uh, almost a year ago who tried to tell me just the opposite. And I, I, you know, we all have to make decisions for our business. And so this was one I made for my business that I would be have I've always been diversified. And they were like, oh, you, you're splitting up your audience. And I said, that's not true. Yeah, there's some, there's some crossover. There's some people who are on multiple platforms. Yeah. But I reach an audience on LinkedIn, even for my show, that I would never reach if I was not there. Because they're 100%. not they're in so the other places, you know? Uh, I think we have a, 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 a hood over our heads as media professionals. So as media professionals, yes, we are on all the different channels all the way across. And, and we follow the same people across to see what the little differences are because, you know, we're glutton for punishment. But I think right. as as consumers or as our audiences, you have a little mm -hmm. bit of cannibalization to your point, but it's not a whole lot of overlap. Are you reaching a tar right. an older audience? Are you reaching a younger audience? Are you reaching reporters? Each one of those has its own right. own mediums all the way through. Um you know, and I'm, I'm sitting there going through and, and looking over here, trying to find a quote from either the social dilemma or the great hack, because I know, Austin, while you sit there and say it's not going to affect us as individuals, I think it will affect us as individuals. So, yeah, I, I do want to clarify, like, I don't what I'm saying is, like, I don't think the Chinese government cares about Austin Staten, Kim Davis or Thomas Bain. They don't care about our personal lives. Now, do they want to influence us into, you know, maybe going the Cambridge Analytica route of maybe influencing an election or sharing propaganda? Absolutely. That and and some people, I mean, whether we want to admit it or not, like propaganda works. Yeah. And 100% yeah. works. We, we've talked Absolutely. about that on this episode multiple times is, is in times of war, there's a propaganda minister who drops either things from flyers to spinning out stuff. Um, and, and so I, I do think that, that, that it will affect us, but we're going to be so blinded to it all the way through, um, when it does start to take place or a new product or a new this, um, I, I do think that if TikTok goes away, it's going to just open up another void for something else that kind of goes from there. Yeah. And of course, Instagram reels, uh, has, you know, was kind of rolled out as a competitor to, uh, to TikTok, um, you know, probably at some point last year, maybe the year before, I can't remember when the exact one, um, but I'll tell you mm -hmm. what, I, I, I'm, I'm actually really concerned about that now because uh, I'm not going to share a lot of details, but uh, earlier this morning, 
you know, I was scrolling through Instagram Reels <laughs> and uh, this one came up and I screen capped it and it says, when you figure out your friend's bathroom schedule, because they start sending you Reels in bulk. And I was like, well, time to us. <laughs> Time to lead Instagram because it knows exactly where I am right now. <laughs> um, too much information. Wow. So, sorry, I shared that on the <laughs> on uh, the <laughs> podcast. But 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 we are starting to see other platforms get into that short form content. Um, you know, YouTube has done it with Shorts. Um, mm -hmm. We've found success posting clips on Shorts and on Instagram Reels. Um, we've had incredible numbers. It's reaching a new audience. So, um, you know, Vine was the TikTok before TikTok. Uh, right. And, you know, it's, it, we have to know that, you know, um, social media apps have to evolve to stay competitive. Remember mm -hmm. Google Plus? <laughs> didn't work out. Remember MySpace? Oh, yeah. Didn't work out. Yeah. Fine. Didn't work out. Um, it's all cyclical. Um, so, I don't know. I think, I think if TikTok goes away, people will be fine. You've just got to adapt. You've got to pivot. Yeah. And that's why you can't be relying on one thing. So, I, I think uh, I'm chuckling just even more after our conversation with uh, the video I sent last night from The Onion from 2011, yeah. where CIA <laughs> cuts their budget because we don't have to spy on people. They'll tell us where they are. We don't have to tell them what they're buying because they tell us what they like and they don't like. And, and how long do we get to use this? I don't know until they find another toy to play with. And they mentioned a Chinese company. And I was like, 12 years too early, but man, they predict better than we do, obviously. Yeah. I, I do think it's interesting, though. Um, you know, we've seen what the U.S. government has done with Huawei. We see what they're trying to do right now with with TikTok. Where do they draw the line with Chinese companies? Are they going to be flat out banned? I mean, is Alibaba going to be banned, um, you know, here in the United States as well? Um, you look actually at the the top 10 apps right now in the app store mm -hmm. and i think it's either three or four of them are chinese owned so it, it's it's not just tiktok mm. um you know why is tiktok the scapegoat right now i'm not sure um i do want to kind of close with this before getting y'all's final thoughts but uh ross bolin who has uh, a, a podcast uh he's based out of austin uh he's from houston uh you know he covers sports pop culture that kind of stuff um he sent out a tweet yesterday saying the, uh, or actually this morning, saying the argument to ban TikTok based on protecting kids from addiction makes me chuckle. Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts were literally created to mimic its addictive qualities. Every social media platform is designed to hook you in for as long as possible. And I think that's absolutely true. That's how you yeah. get revenue. That's how you get the ad dollars. Uh, so he said, just focus on it being about Chinese threats to data security and privacy and you'll be fine. No need to bring another layer of hypocrisy into the mix. I think that's kind of interesting, uh, interesting point to make um, because, you know, that's the nature of social media. It's, it's you know, looking at the screen time on your phone and realizing you spent four hours a day on social media platforms, um, you know, uh, disconnect. I think that's good. Read a book, uh, you know, do something to stimulate your mind other than the, the, the endless scrolling. Um, you know, I think social media can be used for good. I mean, we've seen, you know, the good that like, you know, Facebook groups have done to rally, um, you know, uh, uh, families or people that are, you know, battling illness or parents trying to cope with children with autism, you know, providing resources. We've seen the good that, you know, those platforms have caused, but we've also seen the bad that some of these platforms have caused. So I don't know, maybe that's the human nature relevant, but I don't know, disconnect sometimes. I, I, I like the quote from Ready Player One, the movie. When, when he took ownership of the whole virtual world and he said, we kept everything the same except for one thing. One day a week, the entire network is taken offline towards the end of the movie. And I, I need to find the exact quote for it. Um, but I think it's, it's interesting that, that Austin, to your point, how many people do you have on your platform? How many new people are you getting on your platform? How long are they there? How many ad dollars are coming in? And it comes back to a lot of these companies coming from that, that class out of Stanford that talks about the addictive personalities and how do we and how do we kind of go from there. And I'm wondering if Stanford is starting to re-question some of their thought processes on the psychology and sociology aspects of it, because that's basically what it boils down to. It is, is how well can we get people to do what we want them to do? Yeah. Kim, parting thoughts. Yeah, well, I, I agree with what um, each of you has said, and it, it is really part of the goal of the, these social platforms is to build an audience, 
you know, build a tribe as we call it, get people to be engaged, stick around. And so that's, you know, maybe that is, that's kind of how that's, they were all designed. But I think the key is what you also said is people have to disconnect, right? We have to disconnect. We have to encourage things outside of these electronic platforms because especially in this country, um, one of the areas where we're struggling is the area of critical thinking. Not just young people don't have it, grownups don't have it. We see it daily. We see them, whether they're in Congress or walking around in your, in your business where you work, the clients you consult, right? And so why can't we do it? Instead of using the tools, whether it's a, you know, a, um, a new AI platform or their tools, but what happens is we change our focus and we make them the main things. The main thing still has to be, you know, we have to create, we have to disconnect, we have to read, we have to be able to think. And when we stop doing that, I think we have a bigger problem than TikTok or any other social media platform can can create for us. That's the clip that's going to open up this episode. So if you made it this far, <laughs> now you know where that came from. So. Yes. Hey, that's use, your like mind, a use your mind and your talent to thrive. Logic, logic, logic. And I found the quote that I was actually looking for um, on on Ready Player One, which is a video game, virtual Fortnite kind of think of along those lines. Um, everybody's addicted to it. Nothing really exists in the real world. Um, and it's the Oasis will be completely shut down on Tuesdays and Thursdays, allowing for folks to connect with one another in the real world is how that yeah. movie ends. Um, yeah. And, and I think it's so important that we have these conversations, even if it's in Zoom or it's happy hour, or it's coffee or lunch or dinner, just saying hi to your friends, making time for each other. Our time on this world is short and and spending four hours scrolling through t TikTok um, and having your information sold to the highest bidder is <laughs> not not worth it. Monetize your data. That's the takeaway. We'll get shift back on to, uh, to talk about that. But Kim, Thomas, it's been great chatting with you on this episode of the business communicators and again if you want to follow our work just search the biz or biz communicators on all the social media platforms except tiktok we're not going to be posting there anymore and then uh the business communicators.com <laughs> will we'll find us there so on behalf of uh my co-host tim davis thomas bain and we wish hattie horn was here with us but she'll join us soon my name's austin Staten. we'll see you soon take care everyone you've been listening to the business communicators if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and leave us a five-star review.